of the whole. Um, again, welcome to the Village of Bartlett Committee, Agen uh, Committee of the Whole meeting for February 4th, 2014. I call this meeting to order and ask the clerk please call the roll. Trustee Ahrens? Here. Hammerer? Here. Carbonero? Here. Martin? Here. Ranky? Here. Shipman? Here. President Wallace? Here. Before we start the uh, Committee of the Whole agenda item for uh, planning and zoning, I'll have a message to read. Um, the village has adopted certain rules of decorum for board meetings by ordinance, including procedures for its Committee of the Whole meetings. Those rules provide that uh, during the Committee of the Whole meetings, only matters on the agenda for that meeting will be discussed, and members of the public will be given an opportunity to be heard on each Committee of the Whole agenda item, only after presentation of the matter by village staff and or whoever applicable will be giving that uh, message. And after the board has come to chance to discuss the matter, among themselves. This evening, the board will take up uh, recommendations from the Bartlett Economic Development Commission, Commission, known as the EDC. EDC recommendations and the minutes for its four meetings are quite extensive and are not expected to be concluded this evening, so the discussion of the EDC recommendations will likely be continued and further discussed at one or more future committee of the whole meetings. According to the matter of the EDC recommendations, will not be open for public comments this evening. Comments from the public, including members of the EDC who may be in attendance, at these committee of the whole meetings where the ADC recommendations are presented and discussed will not take place until the board has had an opportunity to complete the review and fully discuss the EDC recommendations among themselves. Um, we thank you for coming this evening. If the reason you are here this evening is for the presentation and discussion of the EDC recommendations, and thank you in advance for your patience in waiting to be heard on this topic. If you cannot attend a future date, you are welcome to submit your comments in writing. The EDC recommendations will take place under Planning and Zoning Committee, which is chaired by Trustee Cameron. Thank you, Mr. President. The Planning and Zoning Committee has one item this evening, the Bartlett Economic Development Commission report discussion. And I would ask staff to summarize the EDC report and recommendations. Uh, thank you, Trustee Kammerer. When we went through this report uh, the first time, we identified uh, the short-term actions, which were the zero to six months. And I reported back to you after that meeting that we had made substantial progress on on all nine of those some of them uh, were weather related and one of them had to do with a, a estimate for downtown relative to electricity and so uh, I guess I can tell you we c continue to make progress on uh, all of those short-term actions and so what I would suggest this evening is that we move on to the next section and utilize the format that the mayor laid out last time, which was to put them in different categories relative to signage and code enforcement, traffic and pedestrian safety, arts grants and capital budget. Uh, and I thought we would just start with the first group and walk through and talk about them. And you folks can see where you want to go with this. If that sounds all okay with you, then we would proceed that way. Sounds like a plan. So if you move into the midterm uh, action, which is on page two of the uh, CD memo, and you look at the ones that would be entitled uh, in the first group, number one. Number one is also number one in the first group, and that is to clean up commercial buildings and yards to help make the downtown area appear more attractive, to prospective businesses and to patrons. Uh, one of the things that we did that is peripherally related to this in the first one is that we have contacted Metro twice with requests and pictures of some of the bricks around the station that are crumbling and asking them to come in and, and fix that. They haven't done that yet, but I think there's probably some weather reasons and so uh, relative to the way our train station looks downtown, we have started to move towards that. Uh, actually, number one has a, everything to do with code enforcement, uh, both building code and, and the uh, c property maintenance code. Uh, we, we try to infuse that code, as we do with all codes, with some uh, level of common sense, and as you know, when it comes to signs and some of those things, we can be 
uh, fairly lenient in giving people extra time. I think what the what I understand the EDC to be saying here is this has more to do with um, cleanup and and uh, some appearance issues relative to some of our building down buildings downtown. And I think that uh, if the board thinks that's important, uh, we would probably step up those efforts. Uh, probably more so than we have been, quite frankly. No, I think that just goes to code enforcement. I quite frankly, I don't think that the village should be doing landscaping for commercial, you know, for commercial entities. Um, I think, uh, you know, if if we observe that a building is in, you know, disrepair or the landscaping isn't the best, we can. Contact the chamber. Let the chamber, mm -hmm. um, uh, and you know, um, reiterate that to the business. That's a good point, TL. We 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 certainly can do that. So I will put that back into code enforcement and try to come up with some measures uh, over the next several months uh, to indicate to you how we have done that. Uh, the next one is also under the first category that the mayor laid out, and that is to include the downtown business district on wayfind signage along the bike paths. Do you want to talk about that, Jim? We'll have to coordinate the, with the park district because a lot of the bike paths they maintain and their 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 bike paths. Um, but we believe we can just through our GIS system identify and and our favorite bicyclist Terry Witt. He will let us know which are the most used bike paths to come into the downtown, but it kind of grew out of a suggestion he made, I believe, and we'll identify which areas and are the most logical to put downtown signage along the bike path. Some of them kind of de facto have them. If you recall a couple of years ago, we did that wayfinding signage with the logo and saying downtown this way. and. Some of those happen to be near a bike path or on a bike path. So we'll just continue to identify the logical spots, work with the park district, make sure they're okay with us putting a sign in those areas, um, and put come up with a sign that, you know, directs people towards the downtown. I appreciate the fact that um, they put include uh, wayfinding signage um, for downtown, but what about the other? Retail areas. You it's know, a I, good I idea. We could certainly extend it to. Do you do nothing to, about them, or the EDC was really focusing on the downtown with this, but it it doesn't preclude us. You know, if we develop wayfinding signage for the bike paths, we can certainly yeah, put, them, yeah. put it to direct people to Route 59. We went through great extent with the Walgreens to allow that bike path to go all the way to the corner of 59 and Stearns, and certainly having a sign that directs people down to 59 and Stearns at, at South Bartlett and Stearns going that way is a reasonable yeah, expectation. Nothing that precludes that, that as question, a part I don't know how any of you feel. As long as you don't put a $20,000 traffic study on the bike paths, I'm fine. <laughs> Hopefully we won't have okay, to do that. Okay, thank you. So if the board thinks that's a good idea, that was kind of our plan for moving ahead with that one. Yeah. Uh, and then moving on, staying in the area of, of number one, as the mayor had laid it out, that would put us to number 10. We're going to jump around a little bit, uh, but at least have it in the same category. And that's to amend the sign code to allow for more and larger business signage. Uh, the staff met on this uh, when this report came out, and I think that we have identified, mainly from hearing from chamber people and businesses, identified five or six of the areas that we think uh, cause the greatest concern, and we have come up with some uh, proposals to amend those uh, areas that we believe would uh, go a long way towards meeting that. and. I would like to bring that to you as part of addressing this issue. Soon. Does, does that include colors too? Because the last gentleman who came in for the still, he was saying, was that only specific for that um, strip mall? You can only have those colors or 
That was that. It's not a town ordinance. It's not. That's not our ordinance. That would be that particular okay. shopping center. One of the things we talked about addressing in terms of the unified center sign plan, which every shopping center has, and and I, I can say two things. Some of the older shopping centers have old sign plans that that don't allow them to have as much signage as they can have. And it's a matter of notifying those people to amend it. But also when we do amend it, right now the way the ordinance is structured on the unified center sign plan, they have to go to the plan commission and then get your approval. One of the things we're, we were going to propose is do an administrative review of that. If the sign plan seems logical and like in that particular gentleman's in instance, he was really <coughs> matching the other side of the center. We don't believe there would be any real problem with that being done administratively. So he doesn't have to go through a longer process. And you could administratively change his colors and change his ground sign and his sign size to match what was there. Without coming and here. Without him coming in front of you and going in front of the plan commission. That's one of the That's given amendments. given another example or two of what we've been looking at? The other example is we have temporary signs that we allow people to do what we call grand opening. Um, those are 90-day limits. And in some instances, people have special deals going on through the year. We thought we'd make it instead of a grand opening, it'd be like more of a special sale or special deal kind of sign and they could have it periodically for times throughout the year rather than just when right. they're opening. You know? And we get a lot of requests for that. So Particularly um, along 59. We yeah, do we, a absolutely. Uh, is there a fee for that or j j j they, uh, you just There's no okay fee it? for that. Okay. We, as long as the sign is out of the right of way and out of the vision <laughs> clearance area, uh, that's what, what our parameters are now so that they're not putting them in the 59 right-of-way or in the Route 20 right-of-way. But we'd allow it for longer periods of time, and, and we haven't developed the time frames, but do it for more, more than just grand openings or, or you know, they do it during the holidays. But at the same time, you've got to be careful because you could have 20 a political right. sign kind of situation where you have 20 at one corner. So we have to work that out a little better. So we'll be bringing back to you uh, a series of proposed amendments that are along the line of trying to broaden that and address the issues that our business folks have brought to us, or brought to the EDC as well. Uh, the second, the last one that is still under number one category is number 11, and that is to erect a larger attractive wayfinding sign at the intersection of 59 and West Bartlett to better direct persons to the downtown area, not quite so easy. This one's problematic in that obviously the intersection of 59 and West Parlor Road, part of that or most of that is a state right of way. Um, the state has very specific limits on what you can put in a state right of way. Um, certainly not a bad idea, a good idea. We might have to try to negotiate with somebody who has some private property there. Um, but that's, again, related to your sign amendment to allow an off-premise sign. Um, if we can convince IDOT to allow that kind of sign to be in their right-of-way, I don't think we'll be there. Paul's laughing at me. <laughs> Is there ever a case where they could attach it to the uh, sound wall there? Well, that's the right-of-way. So even that's, even that's in the right-of-way. Just examples of our welcome to Bartlett signs, most of those signs, although they look like they're placed in public right-of-way, some of those are on easements on properties that we've worked with private property owners. Uh, we've worked with IDOT before to no end on some right. of that. Paul, do you want to address that? A couple of on 59, we did um, some of them do, do a little bit into the right-of-way. There are special requirements as far as uh, breakaway signage, safety signage. Um, they don't do not allow any electrified type of signage. The signs that the lighting that we do have out there are solar. We're pushing the envelope there, but they did allow that. Um, so there are some real tough regulations with the state on the signage. You just paint the wall with a big arrow. <laughs> And we could like it. <laughs> Downtown Park. Uh, so we're going to look at that. We're going to look at all of those options. We know who owns a private property. Uh, we've got some time to look at, at that one. Uh, much more difficult, but if the board would like us to pursue it, we certainly will. 
Is there any uh, exceptions that IDOT's ever made with the large wayfinding signs? For, there's plenty of communities up and down. The, I, I, I mean, we've all driven 59 a ton of times. I've never really seen any uh, wayfinding. Yeah, even when we put up the, uh, the larger uh, wayfinding signs, the, the directional signs up on 59, that is the maximum size that they will allow for directional type of signage on that. I'm not aware of any wayfinding signs or you know, little meter boards or anything else that from that municipalities have. I, I don't know that for a fact. I just from my have, have we ever approached them, uh, Paul? Has anyone ever approached them about um, not being in the median, but actually putting it on that, uh, like Trustee Shipman, uh, Martin said about putting it on that um, sound wall. Have we approached them for, with that at all? We have not no. addressed that with them. I think what I've heard from residents is, a, is some type of a vision of a really nice looking uh, mural. Mm -hmm. So it's not an eyesore, and, and then like Trustee Martin said, just an arrow going down the the way, so it would uh -huh. it would essentially not be a an annoying sign. It would just be a really nice big mural of uh, downtown Bartlett with an arrow pointing down that way. Most yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it, it might be we can we, we can sell it under the uh, guise of it being uh, in, improving the attractiveness of their ugly right. brown <laughs> fence. Leave out that part. Oh, leave out. It can be a good idea, going. actually. That is a good idea. That would be cool. Thank you. Great. Thank you. That one actually would be kind of, kind of neat. Uh, then we would move on to uh, number two, uh, which is I think we covered the pedestrian traffic. That's right. Um, and that begins on page three. And it is number six, and that is to improve the traffic patterns throughout the downtown to enhance the drivability of the area and to seek possible development of some existing parking lots. Uh, as you know, we're looking at some of those downtown traffic patterns. We're certainly a little conflicted because we often talk about uh, improving the uh, pedestrian uh, transportation uh, and movability throughout downtown and now we're talking about the drivability so we need to come up with some compromises on this but I think the whole notion of looking at acquiring one of a, the additional metro parking lots to use it to expand our downtown for office or commercial or whatever we uh, might want to I think is I have to think it's a really interesting issue we talk about the fact that uh, we don't really have a lot of space in our downtown. We're confined by a few blocks as opposed to some other towns who have a lot of space. So the notion of creating addition, additional space, I think, is interesting. Not needed at this time? Well, sure, they're going to need it. I mean, Metro could pave over our whole downtown and use it for parking. So I don't know that need is an issue here. It's whether... It is whether we could convince Metra at an appropriate cost and fund uh, that parking lot. And then, of course, Brian's starting to look at me very closely now. Uh, and then what we would do is sell it to, you know, private something or other to build something to expand our downtown. So if that's a issue you would rather have us look at sooner than later or later than sooner or not at all we should talk about that. I don't know that the expectation is that the village is going to do every single thing here's in here. And there hasn't been one so far that we haven't said yes to so maybe you could give us a little direction on that. direction? Number six. Or we can think about it and bring it up next time. This is going to be back in front of you again. Well, well let me ask this question in relation to the traffic. Uh, we're, what's the progress on that traffic study that we just voted it's, for? It's just getting off the ground. Okay. So we're assuming that the results of that test will somehow 
color our discussion of this issue? Well, that's right. Relative to okay. these issues, it certainly yeah. will. Okay, so maybe we kind of just wait until we hear yeah. on the traffic study. That's a good Spring. idea. Okay. So does that help? Yeah. Okay. That's, right. that's, per, that's direction. Thank you very much. Uh, the next one, I think, is similar, and that is to improve the safety of the pedestrian environment and circulation with additional crosswalks. Uh, I think that may come out of that same study, and uh, certainly adding those crosswalks, if we were able to, is, is pretty doable. Those are the, the ones and the twos, and then we move on to the threes, which are the cultural art. Hey, sorry. Valerie, I'm sorry. Can no, that's okay. Could I, could I uh, Ms. Salmas, can I circle back to six? I uh, had some notes and I <laughs> just looked at them. Um, have we ever done any type of studies based on um, what the demand would be for additional office space downtown? Is there any, like, results that Bartlett has stating that, you know, if we had additional office space in the downtown area, when you're talking about buying a commuter lot, um, I think I think most residents that I've heard from would say, you know, from a, a retail, you know, storefront property, those are what we're having problems, we're struggling with, you know, trying to get those to be successful. But have we had any reports or any studies or any information um, developed uh, over the demand that could be generated for um, an office building? Well, when, when we did the town center uh, RFP, for the for across the street, <clears throat> one of the things that came out of that was the need for uh, office, you know, space as well as as your retail spaces. So that was it wasn't a, a study that said we need you know 50,000 square feet of office space in the downtown. Yeah. But it was a study that said there was a demand for office space, and what we kind of found. From that, with the development of the town center, and then also with Westgate Commons, if just that kind of came in right around the same time, real close together, that was office space, and there was some condominium with that. And we we don't have any specific studies, but we get a lot of people that want to buy their own space, and so I believe there's a demand for that. Again, when the in the economy that we're at, it's hard to develop that. But there's there's a demand for people who would like to see something that they and and we had this with the previous owners, and they were looking at turning some of that into condominiums. They did mm -hmm. the upstairs for the residential condominiums, but they looked at the downstairs, and they had some some problems with the way that it was laid out and with the condominium laws. But Westgate Commons has some condos, and, and there's, there's some demand for that. Um, th there is office space in Westgate Commons that has still been unfilled, but there is still some, there's some demand. I can't, we didn't do any specific study. Yeah. It just was get an outgrowth of our planning efforts. I know when I was looking to open a business uh, back in, late 2000s, I started looking for office space. I looked at some of the storefronts here, and then I had to go all the way to Roselle mm -hmm. to find, a, you know, an actual office right. space. Um, and, and, and one of the things is that, uh, excuse me, I, I one of the things that town center owners, the previous owners, didn't take advantage of is that we allowed for office space to be located on that first floor. And they never brought in, they, they could have up to, uh, I want to say six or eight thousand square feet of that in their in their covenant or their PUD devoted to office space, and they they didn't bring in an insurance agent, or you know they they did bring in our our eye doctor, and that was the, that was the only office space that we saw. But they had the ability to bring in more. I think they were waiting for their second building to be built because that was primarily going to be all office upstairs. That was going to be about eight thousand upstairs. And they obviously never built that, but yeah. there was a demand for it, and it kind of came out of our planning studies more than more than that. So I well, think there is that demand. You were asking for a little direction. I would love to get some feedback. Uh, maybe spend a little bit. Of, have staff spend a little bit of time looking into the successes of um, you know similar downtown areas where they've built sure. uh, you know an actual office building, three or four story office building. I'd be interested to see that information. Good. Good. We can, we can um, do that. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff that 
real, uh, when we were talking about this before, instead of um, trying to, uh, you know, figure out who, what will work downtown, it's best to try to figure out, you know, what will make downtown work. <laughs> Right. And maybe it is office space, and then you got people that are eating right. more of these places down here, and so that would be a good information I would like to see. We certainly can do that. Okay, sorry. I you want to move on now. Threes. Want to do the threes? Sure. All right. The first three is number four. Four, which is continue to expand the West Bartlett Road corridor, <laughs> streetscape, trees, flowers, benches. Lights, banners along the Oak Avenue corridor. Are there potential for other grants? We got the grant for the West. Is there potential well, for other grants to do the same thing? Well, certainly not as much. We got several grants for that mm -hmm. one. I mean, we, we were able to parlay some of the early ones into further grants. Um, I think what was the financial breakdown on that? Do you remember it was, that? We, we spent about 331000 and we got grants for about 780000 roughly. It was an STP program, surface transportation program. That's a program that's out there. Yeah, it's we out to, there. We have to seek it and apply local share for it. But they're yeah, out there. Yeah, I mean, that, that would be what we'd have to look at, absolutely. For sure. Otherwise, it's all in our nickel, right? to expand if you were going to do something similar that would be but it'd be at a very expensive nickel yeah uh, the next number three is eight which is to create a cultural arts and tourism commission as a separate entity utilizing a mix of village and private funds with the responsibility of creating and organizing events to draw area residents to the downtown business district. Some of these uh, you may want to set aside, and I'm thinking about the TIF as well, for you know m more time to be able to consider it and have uh, more information brought to you. So I, I just say that because this is a a lot to, to think about. I would think that would make a lot of sense to set this on the back burner, so to speak, or give and, us some time. I agree. Well, and, and, and in doing so, it seems like if we're going to create this arts, cultural, tourism organization, it may not be something that the village spearheads, because ultimately this is going to be something that these organizations or organization is going to need to take care of. So I don't know, are we in a position to create that, that entity, or is this going to be a resident or, or organization-driven uh, initiative? Because, I, I mean, has anybody stepped up to tell the village, hey, we would be interested in, in forming this partnership? Okay. Well, and, that, and therein lies the problem. Have we, have we contacted, you know, the Chamber, Arts and Bartlett, et cetera, et cetera? Have we contacted those folks and said, hey, we're thinking about this? We, um, I don't know if you remember, but how, what was it, five years ago, six years ago? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Anyway, we did, we did do a, a very in-depth study of creating a, a community Actually, we did. Yeah. Art, center. art center, and um, it just wasn't feasible. It just wasn't feasible. And um, uh, I, I, I don't think anything's changed since then. So, so I, I also would, would... But that was the actual building something. I don't think this is us building something. This is like a commission in how we can promote. Well, we I don't no think we're talking about building across the street like they were before. But well, we have nobody stepping forward saying that they want to do this. Are we looking at the same well, line? Let's ask the Arts and Art president. <laughs> right. See right there. So maybe instead of putting this on the back burner... And when I see the word create, I assume that the that's village not, would create. That's not building a building. That's what that was about, what T.O. was talking about. Oh. It was uh, about building a building, but there wasn't enough, um, there wasn't enough response. Not, not, uh, there wasn't enough response to justify building the building, let alone the financial commitment. Well, well I think uh, number eight and number nine coincide, don't they? Yeah, create an art center. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's the other number three. 
so that, that we could talk about at the same time. Uh, and it does say to create an art center in cooperation with Arts and Bartlett and seek a larger space for the expansion of its services and to seek grants for that endeavor. I, I guess I'd like to hear from organizations in the community. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's feasible for us to drive, because maybe, maybe there is no interest. Maybe there's no flash in the pan, so to speak, and maybe there is. I don't know. Well, it's, it's um, uh, for me, in my opinion, and again, I don't think it's up to the village to support Arts and Barlet in that way. I mean, right now, um, uh, uh, they, they do great work, and, and they seem to be a very vi viable organization. However, we, we st right now staff all their meetings. Um, uh, we created the little uh, um, gallery upstairs. Uh, and we give them six thousand dollars a year without any, any, um, uh, you know, numbers involved as to what they're, do, you know, doing with the six thousand. I'm not, I'm not saying that to question, or or to suggest that they're doing something bad, but uh, you know, I, there there comes a point at which you say to um, uh, a special interest group. We've helped you enough. If you can't survive on this, <laughs> you know, um, then then you have to look within yourselves to do fundraising and you know all the other stuff that the other groups do. So, uh, and the, and that's my uh, humble and probably ill-informed, nasty opinion. <laughs> I, I do believe Arts and Bartlett brings a lot. They actually have the event. Uh, in the park that brings a lot of people downtown and those people shop elsewhere too and uh, I know we help out other organizations so um, it, it's not like here give us the money and we never see a dime from that I think no 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 yeah. I didn't okay. and I didn't say that did I I said we just give them the money without without any um, without their giving any uh, without their giving us any kind of financial report Oh, we don't see it. We don't see it. If it is I guarantee true. that all those people, when they get hungry, they're going to the restaurants while they're looking at the yard. Not everyone, but some, which benefits other businesses. Well, the, but that's once a year. Here, here's what I would like to have happen no. on this. Um, can we, next, next packet, dig up some of the information from some of the references that Trustee Aarons had made regarding some, sounds like we spent some pretty significant funds to try to figure out the demand. We did. And, uh, and what that uh, result was. Um, so maybe we could share that with the board at the next meeting. Um, just the cliff notes right. of, of that information. Sure. And also maybe we should include um, what support we're providing now, specifically for the Arts in Bartlett. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we can share with the board their financials. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we do anything else for them? The six thousand, I think, is accurate. Yeah. No, I, I yeah. think about that, but I think that's it. I know that Senator Colerton was recently in town visiting the Arts and Bartlett, and hopefully, he'll find some funding as well. Well, not only that, um, the Arts and Bartlett is looking for another place because the activity is there. There's people that are there and uh, believe in the Arts and Bartlett, and it's just not like, well, what do we do now? No, it's it's growing every year. Am I not right? We are bursting at the seams. Yeah. We cannot expand anymore in the space that we're at. Thank you. Well, no, I, I think you guys are doing a great job. Well, one of the reasons I think that we shared with uh, the kind of shared with Senator Kohler when he is in is the reduction in the amount of art classes provided at the grade school and junior high and even high school level is going to exponentially increase the demand for those particular services. And that being said, um, I would have to say that, you know, those are, uh, that's, that's an operation that does need to look for, um, you know, some additional funding mechanisms. It's not an economic time where the village can say, okay, we can, we can fund this. We can help as much as we can, but um, 
But I, I do, I believe anyway, it's my opinion that that will continue to grow just because of the lack of, of services being offered by the schools. Can, you, can I ask Rita Lipinski something? Is that allowed? It will be. I, why, don't, uh, why don't you guys use the park district space? The whole community center. They have rooms available all day long and most evenings. I think that it's nice to have, since we are all volunteer run Arts Council, it's nice to have our own space where we are able to have the community come in and experience a lot of things that we wouldn't be able to do in a space such as the Park District. Have you talked to them to see if you could work out some kind of co-op? We do have quite a great liaison. Just like we have a liaison from the village to come to our board meetings, we have, have always had a park district liaison, and we do a lot of partnershiping together. We use their space at the Nature Center for our theater program and some of our fundraising events. Okay. It's just not our two. I mean, they actually have music classes there, among other things. They have what? They have music classes over at the Arts and Barley. Have what kind of class? Music. Music. Isn't music art? Lots of art classes, lots of music classes. Our, our community chorus readers is there now. Thank you. And you're currently paying rent. We pay a monthly rent. Monthly rent. So is there opportunities to expand to some other vacant facilities in Bartlett? And we have been looking. Yeah. Thanks. Well, I think of things like the the bacon ace hardware in the shopping center in downtown. I mean, it's a space. It's a big space, and whether you could afford to be in that kind of a retail uh, shopping center, I don't know. But we've looked at some of the spaces there. The ace is too big. Too big. Would you like to move on to number four, or would you like to hold, you would like to move on to number four, is that correct? What would the board like to do? do the fours? On? Yeah, let's, let's move on. Okay. All right. Then the four, is there just one would board we to do? I'm sorry, I can't. I'm having trouble hearing everybody tonight. We're moving on to the next yeah, like to next item. Four. Oh, yeah. What are we doing with um, but I, I just, I mean, uh, eight, anybody, anybody can throw any additional information in. I just requested that we refresh, the, especially with new members of the board, um, the information that came out of the prior study that you had okay. and also um, kind of give us up-to-date uh, information on um, how we're supporting Arts and Bartlett now. Okay. Great. The last, uh, the last item, and it's, it's the four under uh, the capital budget-related projects, and this is to create a downtown tax increment finance district to create a future funding source for marketing, financial supportive events and potential incentives for future businesses. Seems like we'd want to continue on with that, wouldn't we? I think that would be incentive to hopefully bring in future businesses in the downtown area. When did the last TIF close? Two years. Uh, yeah, we we years closed ago. it, yeah, this is 2014, I think it ended in 2011. <coughs> and then extended on through that 2012. Was that was the extension, yeah. Yeah. 11. So the, the, the payouts were given out to the, the right. funding district 2011, and then it continued, continued on for another year. Are there? I believe. No, that was the end of it. Okay. Yeah, that was the, I think it was 2010 was the cutoff. Yeah. It was continued through uh, the end of yeah. Okay. Sorry. End of 2010. Are there legal ramifications about starting another TIF? Is there a period of time you have to wait in between? Well, the, no. any any TIF district requires an outside consultant to do the study to evaluate if your area that you want to propose the TIF in qualifies under the state guidelines. And how so much does that legal usually run and how long does that take, John? 
Well, we believe you could probably do an outside consultant study for, and you do an RFP to select one, but probably in the twenty to twenty-five thousand dollar range. And his study will probably take th two to three months to complete, ballparking it. But there are legal requirements to do that in order to determine the eligibility. They do the eligibility report, they put together a redevelopment plan, and then present it to you, and then you vote on creating the TIF. As far as your question of, because we had one, can we have another? You can, <clears throat> if it meets the factors, the blighted factors and things, and some of that depends on the area. It doesn't have to be the identical area. It can have some overlap. It can be bigger. It can be smaller. And all the factors would be looked at as to your proposed uh, TIF area. Uh, some of the things you have on here that you're talking about, the only way you're going to be able to spend public dollars is with the TIF. So, for instance, the notion, if you could even talk METRA into giving you land or selling you land and then you want to put up an office building. Short of the TIF, this village does not have the legal authority to spend public dollars to put up an office building. With a TIF, you can incentivize the developer to do it. You can spend the money on, uh, and, you know, to facilitate that and to incentivize that uh, in financing. And I recall uh, the mayor, when he was on the EDC, we went through and they had a lot of ideas and I'd have to say, you could do this, you can't do that, you can do this. And so it isn't the panacea, but it's one of the only ways that you can use public dollars for this private benefit. Otherwise, you can't use public dollars for private benefit. So even sometimes, even though the TIF, when you're starting out, you don't have the increment built up yet, but there are things that you can do, uh, you know, transferring money into it and whatnot, where grants you the legal authority to do some of the things to spur on development that you would like. Without it, you know, the village is limited on what we can do legally to help. Um, right. So, so it seems to me like number five could be attached at the hip to number one on the long-term objectives. Uh, I think they're attached at the hip. Creating a downtown TIF is going to be attached at the hip to encouraging support and private sector redevelopment. I mean, those two are go hand in hand. There are a number of things in there that really Attorneys to it. always kill our really good ideas, don't they? No, I'm telling you, do it. <laughs> tell me how. You know, one of the well, things that might be useful, uh, <laughs> there are some pieces of information that you all have asked relative to the things we've gone through, uh, and we have a, a good analysis of our first TIF, what yes. it accomplished. Uh, in each and every year, how many businesses we help, what we did to the assessed value, and and maybe that would be a helpful thing to look at as you're considering this. Uh, I'd like to see that because, as I recall, the last couple of years of the TIF were limited success, or is that an incorrect categorization? That's incorrect. Okay. Well, I don't know. It seemed to me like as soon as they were. Some of the businesses were made, if I remember right, as soon as the businesses were made aware of it ending, everybody was rushing right? to take advantage we, of, we, of that. We did a, we did a yeah. lot of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Buck cleaning and everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's so right. Getting all your dental work done. We also summer. have some primers on a TIF and what uh, descriptions of TIF that we get from the state that will be good handout information that Tony's found to, to, to supplement your discussion on that. Too. Yeah, I think Didn't you say the last time we talked, Jim, that um, there's some sales tax that is not included in the new tips or some changes? So it, it, it may not that's be as beneficial as it was before, but it would still right. help. Right. I think if yeah, I'm yeah, hearing sales, ever sales tax is out now. But, yeah, we'll, there are, the, the primers will give you a good overview of what a TIF is, how it operates, explains Brian's legal opinions in there, and how you go about it. Uh, can you just remind me again, Jim, what the downtown area consists of? In the in the original TIF district? Well, yes, and if we were, good, I'm assuming it'd be the same. Is that mm, correct? It doesn't. It it probably will not be the same. We probably would. The original TIF district went from basically 
uh, Western Avenue, going on both sides of the tracks, kind of kind of following uh, the the commercial zoning, and then it went up Oak Street, and it went down south to Main Street to Bartlett Plaza. It took in all of Bartlett Plaza, and then when you went to going east here, it took in all the what was the industrial buildings all across the street. And we excluded out some of the uh, uh, residential stuff up on Oak Street and excluded out most of the residential stuff that was interspersed around the downtown. Now, if you create a new TIF, there may be some abilities to go like down Berto to, you know, and, and see possibly the Flexonics property. Um, Can we go or, west to 59? Is there, there's more land there, but is that commercial on the north side, west part of the road before 59? You can create your own boundaries, but you have a big area in between. It has to meet that those blighted conditions and all that. And, and it has to be either con contiguous. contiguous. And the yes. problem is you've got so much residential right. in between, that would almost be a separate one. Mm -hmm. Right. So mechanically, uh, what's our, well, I'm going to mix my metaphors. So mechanically, what's our game plan here? You're going to provide us with a, a primer and I'm going to bring uh, back the report okay. uh, of the first TEF, uh, some information about it, and and put it back on a committee for you to discuss this issue. Okay. Yes. And, and give you some parameters so that you can incorporate that in the RFP and, and get it out there? We certainly yeah. can. Okay. okay. What about that blighted area by 59 and Lake? We'll save that. There's going to be other incentives involved in that uh, location. <laughs> We're going to be worried about TIF district there, 59 and 20. Yeah. Any other comments that we want to? So that add? is the end of our middle section of the recommendations yeah, from the there. EDC. All right. Okay. Then we'll continue. Thank you. Thank continue you the much. saga at another meeting. Yes. Yeah. She'll see this again. Okay. I guess we're done. That's all. Yeah. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Martin, seconded by Trustee Rank. Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Aarons? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ranky? Yes. Shipman? Yes. We are adjourned. <laughs>